Ah, yes, everybody, welcome. Welcome. How do I press this? What do I press to make this work? Oh, I'm here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, man. Mm. Long time no see. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to this live stream where I will be live streaming. This year's A Game By Its Cover jam. Uh, I've been doing some prep work. I already have something figured out. I have something prepared. And it's finally time to start working on it because there is not much time left, only 20 days left. Um, and um, it's been already extended. So that's all we're gonna get. Um, I'm hoping to do uh, four hours a day. That should give us 80 hours. That's kind of like a good budget for, for a game. It's not gonna be the most creative game in the world. I'm gonna explain in a second, let me explain. Uh, first of all, uh, hey, hey, Archie. Yeah, um, Archie, not Archie. <laughs> Very far away screen. Um, yeah, let, let you guys let me know if uh, the audio is okay because that's something that I'm most concerned about. Very new setup. Everything about the software and the hardware, about the location, everything, literally everything here is new. I'm using new camera, new PC, new software. I haven't been streaming for three years. It's, it's everything is in. Oh, I have a, like a microphone set up here and everything. And so, yeah. The audio is good. That's good. And I'm happy. Thank you. Traumatized. Traumatized. Traumatized worth. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let me let me walk you through what we, we have planned today. We have we have things planned today. We want to we want to make progress today and we want to get some something going on here. I have to adjust my microphone up there a little bit, maybe at some point. Good. Um, so let me show you what I have planned. Uh, there is a beautiful card that I want to show you. Oh, yeah, I'm a little tiny guy in the, in the screen. Well, let me let me get this out of the way for real quick. So there is a nice card that I. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Oh my gosh. Okay. So here, a game by its cover. There we go. I have some. I have some cards selected that I kind of like that spoke to me. On some level, and I, if you follow me on Coffee, I actually did a um, like a diary where I walk you through some of the ideas I had with some of the cards. But the card I decided I'm gonna be working on is this one. Uh, Shape of Mind uh, is the card I'm gonna be working on. I kind of like this. This is this is a good looking card. I mean, all of these are a very good looking card. Um, it's a word combination of traumatized and Edgeworth. Oh, that's right, traumatized Edgeworth. I remember, yeah. Oh man, mm. I'm still working through the uh, through the recent game on the on the on the Switch with the uh, that plays in the past. One of my favorite series. Right, so I want to be working on this. Um, it is. I have. I have also some some designs already that I uh, came up with that I, I want to show share with you. Let me open uh, as bright. Uh, as uh, so bright. There we go. Add a boy. Um, so oh man, I don't even know. Okay, maybe that's <laughs> that's not that's not the most impress, interest, uh, impressive interesting thing. Uh, maybe like this. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. This is this is the design, the screen design I have prepared. Um, so the general idea is it's going to be a bit of a solitaire kind of game. That's why it's not the most you know crazy unique um, uh, mind blowing game. I kind of like I didn't have to really so much time to focus on something like really out out there. Uh, but I had like this idea of maybe creating a um, creating a. Um, a solitaire kind of game, right? And the idea with solitaire is when you have solitaire, you have like cards on a table, right? And the cards have numbers. Um, and you arrange the cards on the tableau using the numbers. And you know which cards belong together based on the numbers of the cards. However, uh, I thought it would be kind of interesting if you get rid of the numbers and instead you know which cards belong together uh, solely based on the shapes of the cards. Kind of like um, fit together like puzzle pieces. And that's how you kind of like combine the cards. You have like the cards and put them together and they're plop, they stick together. And that's how you how you do the solitaire thing. Now, this is kind of like an additional challenge. Like, like mechanically, this is actually not, this is actually quite simple 
a quite simple uh, version of solitaire. There's not too many cards on the table and so forth. Um, but the challenge is going to be kind of like like visually parsing and kind of like you know in your mind like in your mind uh, processing what's happening on the screen. That's going to really be part of the challenge, which is a bit weird. Um, and I'm not sure if this will work, but uh, I had some uh, prototypes. But yeah, I did some I did some prototyping. I'm going to show you the prototypes in a second. Um, so the idea is that you have four lanes. That, that's the randomized cards, and you can like move them around like like as if they are cards. You can stick them together. You can break them apart, uh, but you can only move one card to another column when it actually connects with the with the other card. So right now they're not connected. If you move them around, you have they have to connect, and you also have to alternate colors. And there's going to be three colors, <laughs> which is a bit weird. Uh, I was a bit inspired by a Shenzhen Solitaire, which also has three suits, um, and it's actually it creates interesting strategies in the way you have to get rid of all the cards. And then you see this halo around the head of the of the girl here. That's how you get rid of the cards. So you eventually you would drag them inside here. And the idea is that uh, all the cards uh, they belong together like puzzle pieces, and they eventually they loop around. <laughs> so you don't have like just you know because in solitaire you go like from uh, king all the way down to aces, or sometimes you start with aces. But yeah, you you have just like a line, right? It starts somewhere and ends somewhere. And in this game, it doesn't. It, the line doesn't end; it just continues, like it just loops around and continues. Um, and the, I, that's something that I got from um, uh, Regency Solitaire, which is also a very nice game, a very nice solitaire game. They do that too with cards, so like um, the two loops around into the king, or like aces. I'm not, or, I'm not sure how that, but like lower cards loop around back to the king. Um, and that's kind of nice, but um, like doing it with puzzle pieces totally makes sense because you create like these these uh, nice little loops. And so the idea is that you drag down and, the, and you want to create like a complete loop, and then the loop disappears and turns into a dream. And uh, you are supposed because there's like three suits, and so you can create three loops. And when you finish three loops, then the level's over. Uh, the Shenzhen three suit thing is really neat. Makes the game a, a lot easier than four suits. I'm not sure if it makes the game easier. See, that that's the problem. Um, with the three suits, there is always more opportunities. So you have like more with more opportunities to uh, combine cards, because like when you have like four suits, only two cards. Like if you alternate the colors, then you only have always have two suits. So let's always like fifty percent of the cards are cards that you can attach potentially, and we have three suits. Um, two thirds of the cards are potentially something that you can use. Um, the only problem with that is that um, you really have to make sure that you are changing it up because you might add up with too many cards of one suit. And that's kind of like, so just like in, at the beginning it's easier, but the ending gets difficult. You have to be doing good decisions early on so you don't get stuck later on. Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. And there's like, if once you have cards or puzzle pieces, then you can do very interesting, um, funky stuff. Like if there's, if this is a circle, like this is a circle, like the, all the puzzle pieces connecting to the circle, you can do shortcut puzzle pieces. But I'm not sure if we're gonna get there. Um, I just wanna, again, it's just 20 days, right? So we don't have too much time. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I wanna do too crazy stuff. Uh, I want to show you maybe, so these are the different shapes that I came up with because they were just prototypes there in the previous one. It was just like a general like, screen layout. Uh, creating this ring is going to be a bit of a uh, problem. These are like different shapes that I came up with. Uh, only We only have three colors on every suit, uh, on every level. Um, we might try more suits, but um, I think... Hey, 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 Senor Bao, how are you doing? Um, we might have more suits in it. I might have to figure out if those shapes even read well. Uh, I did already some experiments and um, yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit tricky. It's kind of like visually kind of, kind of challenging. So you can like tone down the actual mechanics because there is so much other skill checks. Um, and then, oh yeah, by the way, a very important thing that I have to keep on track of is that um, the different Cards are recognizable even if you're colorblind because you cannot rely on colors to communicate these things. Um, and then, 
Uh, this is like a level select screen, basically. You have like this dream waves. Uh, uh, yeah, this is start screen. So basically, this is how the game will load. And probably uh, these are just like from taken from the card. I will probably have like a start button. And I definitely want to this time around, I definitely want to have like a how to play button because that's something that people were struggling with on um, uh, high stakes. So yeah, definitely we want to definitely get um, get a really nice uh, tutorial going this time around. I have some ideas how, how this will work. Okay, so um, let us, because people asked about this, so I wanna, this time I wanna do this. So um, let, let's do a roadmap. I'm gonna make this bigger so we can see. So just like, just overall planning, right? Like what are we going to do? Okay, so technical challenges. There's some technical challenges. First of all, you see this girl in the background the, the, on the start screen. This is kind of like a big visual on the beautiful, beautiful... By the way, I haven't talked who made this. Who made this beautiful... I, I, I always forget the name. Uh, yeah, let's open tweet deck, whatever. I tweeted out the name. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Augustine... Augustine Christ, Christostromo. Chrysostromo. Augustine Chrysostromo? Augustine Chrysostomo. There we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for butchering the names. Um, no, he's a cool guy. Uh, I asked him if he was okay with this, and, and he said yes. That's a very important aspect of it. And look at this. Look at these beautiful illustrations. Such a talented artist. Very beautiful. Um, uh, very beautiful. Like these line art. And those animations maybe we can get like this wiggly the wiggly look going that would be nice like the wiggly look of the website it would be it's difficult to pull off in pico 8 because we did, just don't have the resolution and just moving things a line by one pixel is just like huge shaking so getting like these kinds of things might be difficult but i mean we have like if you're working in large scale this might work and yeah you can see like some of his illustrations and he does such a good job with colors uh, sadly, we are very restricted with colors in Pico 8. We're going to use the extended color palette, but there's just so much you can do. Yeah, he, he does some good stuff. Good stuff. So yeah, shout out to the artist, Augustine. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so technical challenges. I want to do um, um, line art. Uh, Line arts as girl. Let's go on line art girl. So I want to create the image of the girl. I want to actually use lines, line statement to draw her in the background. And that will allow, so basically the vector art. Maybe let's call it vector art, vector girl. Where are those other card uh, ideas they made? Uh, you mean on the website? Yeah, the, he made. He made, um, he made, he was, this, this is not his fir first uh, game by its cover jam. There was some multiple things that he did. Okay, so um, we're going to create this, this girl and like drawing the vector stuff is not going to be difficult, but we have to somehow create the girl. So we might have to create like an editor to trace out the shapes, um, the, the artwork of the girl. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, as I said, the halo is going to be difficult. So the, because when you, drag the shapes down on, on her kind of like her face and they start floating around her head. That's the idea. And uh, animating those will be difficult. So that's a, that's a bit of a technical challenge here. Uh, it's more technical challenge, not super hard, but it's kind of like a question is like the font. Uh, always a big problem in Pico 8 because uh, they, there's a custom font system now, but the letters I ended up here, they're bigger than the H time 8 sprites. So we're going to have to do some kind of maybe custom system. So I'm going to do a question mark. I don't know how to solve this. Maybe we don't need the, the font anywhere else in the game. And then that's just going to be like a sprite. Uh, I was missing, I was messing around with vector art in Pico 8 and haven't figured out how to fill in the shapes with color. Yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> I'm probably not going to do it, like reinvent the wheel here. There is some, um, there's some code on the 
on the forum that you can use. I probably will use that. Uh, but there's not much fill and I have to do here anyway. It's just like the shirt. So I might get away without just doing it if I have to. Although like the, the, the hair shading would be also nice to fill in. Um, oh yeah, by vector girl. There's, it's just not the, the vector. Okay, so let me let me just split it up because it's creating, creating vector girl, and also drawing vector girl is also going to be the difficult drawing vector girl. Um, the reason why I want to make this, um, yeah, but I don't. Um, so there is also px9. This image should compress well. I, I agree. Yes. Um, the only problem is I. I, I mean, I just could use it. I could use it as a sprite. <laughs> what else I'm going to use the sprite sheet for? <laughs> the sprite is going to be probably really empty. Um, the reason why I don't want to use sprite is that I maybe don't want to like scale a little bit, do some kind of scaling uh, thing. I definitely want to animate her a little bit because I think like if she's just standing there and doing nothing, she looks a bit frozen. So I might want to maybe like animate breathing. That would be nice. Um, and for that, I would love to have her as a vector. I, I'd just like to experiment with vector. And when we are doing drawing vector, um, then I want to also uh, do subpix subpixel uh, drawing vector. Uh, it's not technically not difficult, but I, we have to figure out we have the um, uh, we have the um, uh, you know processing power to do the stuff. Hey it's, the, hey, it's Augustine here. It's the coolest. Thank you for selecting my cover. We would love to see the whole process. I'll be tuning in for sure. Yeah, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for your beautiful image. Thank you for agreeing uh, for this experiment here. I'm <laughs> don't expect too much. I don't have too much time left. I have to. I do my best, but uh, yeah, yeah. That's. I agree. Breathing would be really nice. Um. Um, if you get, get like, like, you know, like this kind of, because it looks like yoga, right? Like it looks like relaxing. And that's generally my overall goal with the, with the, with the game. I want to have like something that's really chill out and relaxing. That's why it's kind of like a kind of simple-ish solitaire game. I want people to be like listening to nice music and, 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 and uh, breathing in and relaxing and then playing this game. And I think like so solitaire games are kind of like really relaxing kind of games. I feel like it's kind of like you just like chill out and drag cards around and they, it should feel juicy and nice, obviously. Uh, hey, Steve Gaming in, in the chat. I, I will switch to the chat window in a second here. I just wanted to finish this roadmap here. So these are the technical challenges. Let me save this. Uh, I'm gonna just save it on the desktop. Uh, road map. There is also gameplay challenges, and that is going to be um, uh, I don't know levels question mark. I don't know how the entire level thing works. Right now, I did have a level mockup, level select select screen mockup that looks like this um, with some parallax scrolling. That would be nice. Um, but the way I envision it currently is just is going to be a um, kind of like history. Like because like in, in solitaire there is no real levels right you just click play and then you get a random um, random layout of cards um, so what I thought maybe is that you can save the random key uh, of the level and you can like if you failed at making finishing the level you can go back or if you think you can do better then you can go back and redo it and do it better um, I have an ideas of how to do like a scoring tier. Um, depending on how big the chains are that you create, like it's it's gonna go come back to it later. But yeah, um, I um, I have some ideas of maybe how to do this off, but I, I I cannot really know how this plays out until I actually have it and, and try it. Um, yeah, Steve Gaming says I'm working on your Pico H map tutorial videos right now, and they are wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for 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 uh, for watching the videos. I, I appreciate. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure exactly how the levels will work. Maybe there's not gonna be levels. Maybe it's just gonna be try to do it. And if you do it, you're finished. Like that's gonna be like the minimum thing. It's just like, it's gonna be a very short game kind of like thing. Because it's not a very difficult solitaire, I have to say. Um, but solitaire is kind of like these things where it's like when you finish, it's, you're fine just doing it again, right? Like it's not, that's kind of like how um, the Shenzhen solitaire works as well. Uh, if you know the game Wilma's Warehouse, that was my main inspiration behind this. <laughs> but uh, decluttering thoughts uh, and stuff in your mind 
instead of items. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I know Wilmot's Ware, Wilmot's Warehouse. I haven't played it, but it seems like like um, kind of similar idea. Well, I guess it's not necessarily Wilmot's Warehouse because it's more like more solitaire, but uh, they're definitely related games. All right, so um, yeah, we don't know how the levels will work. And difficulty is also something and I'm really not sure how we're gonna solve. Um, I, yeah, maybe we're gonna, there's gonna be difficult tiers, difficulty tiers, um, special um, cards. So I had ideas for like, because because the cards are not longer num numbers, but like special shapes that belong together. You can do like funky stuff with special cards that create weird effects. Um, but I'm not sure if we're gonna add them. They might be, I think that makes the game easier or more difficult. But again, that's maybe something that we're gonna leave. Uh, it's kind of difficult to make uh, game design decisions based on those things before you even have anything. So I wanna like uh, marinate in working on the game for now and then later on come back to this question and, and ask if we want to have those special cards. Um, yeah. Anything else I think? I think that I think that's that's kind of like a good roadmap so far. Now let me let me switch back to Pico Eight. Now now we can see the chat again. Oh, let me wait. Can we do? Uh, ah, well, too late. Um, right. Oops. Um, let us close these things. And move things over. Actually, we already have something we can start with. So I want to pick this up. Uh, let me look real quick. Okay. Uh, let me do a folder thing. I'm just, I'm just, don't mind me. I just like being here real quick. Uh, let's call this shapes. Okay. Uh, I have my sync folder. Oops. Uh, let's see, shapes. Uh, load shapes. Um, I will be working with Gruber Music on this one. And already asked Gruber Music if uh, they were interested in making music for this and they were very excited. He was very excited. And he actually made some music already. But I'm not sure if we... If, this is just like a first draft. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm not really able to give good feedback on the music yet because I don't have any gameplay. Um, and like music is always often, often that... Like if you hear it... Isolated from the gameplay, it might sound fine, uh, and then but then you have it in the gameplay, and it's like oh, so I really want to have the gameplay done before I do anything. So, um, but uh, just in case, uh, if you want to hear what we have so far, how do I set my mind for the delayed gratification that will be my own fully finished game? Uh, asks Agent APM. Um, so uh, this seems to be like a question of motivation, kind of like how do you how do you um, delay the gratification of, of making your own game? Like, how do you uh, keep your motivation up before the game is finished? Is that the question? Um, here's the music. Do we, do, we hear, do we hear anything? We don't. Did I, did I mute everything? Oh, it's very quiet, huh? No, it's, it's quiet for me as well. Do you guys hear this? Do you hear this now? Oh, nobody's hearing anything. Oh no. That's bad. I hear it, so that's weird. Uh, oh man, it's, I, I see. <laughs> Everybody says like, ah, oh, just do a stream. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's like ah. Okay, there's music happening right now. This it's very quiet. Yeah, it's very quiet. I'm gonna maybe I try to make it a bit more louder.
I definitely hear something. <laughs> okay, it's very um, ambient kind of music. So, um, so yeah, let me let me go back to my previous settings. On <laughs> I've changed ever all my settings. All of my settings are wrong. I will have to do some offline testing to make sure it sounds good. Maybe maybe I accidentally because there's there's like this new feature, right? Where where is it? You have to run and, and like oh man. Whatever. We're gonna do it later. Um Yeah, it's, it's quite it's it's quiet in Pico 8 already. And I think all of the setup in my streaming kind of like made everything extra quiet. Okay, good. So let us get started. Let's get started with the programming, right? Function in it and function draw and function update. Let me get up the chat out here. Sinogia, hi, how are you doing? My question, Agent APM asked, my question was about expecting too much from myself uh, in an unreasonable short amount of time. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, that's the game development question, right? Um, uh, and I've been struggling with this myself as well, uh, because I didn't have so much time to develop like something like really new and genius and, and, and crazy. Um, I was distracted a lot and the solitaire thing is like the best thing I came up with and it's like I, I don't, it doesn't feel like so like I'm not really too hyped necessarily about the idea um, but it's kind of like I want to make a game and I like the visuals and that's definitely something that 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 hypes me and um, yeah, I, I, or let's, it's not that I'm not hyped. I want to make this, right? I, I, I'm definitely hyped. But it's like I feel um, on paper it doesn't sound that great if you say like, oh, it's just a solitaire game. So I kind of like have to remind myself that like in hindsight, it's always great to have made a game. Like it's always great like, oh, I have just another, you know, cap in my, uh, feather in my cap, right? Um, and it really doesn't matter. Uh, what the game actually is just like having more made more stuff always feels more richer and you're always um, During development you have lots of opportunities lots of ways to make the game more awesome um, And at the end the game will always feel more than just as the sum of its parts um, uh, And you co I kind of have to remind yourself that this is this is what you're signing up for and th That on paper doesn't have to sound great, but you make it great while you work on it uh, scope creep, yeah, feature creep, I think is the thing. Um, yeah, yeah, scoping is, is difficult, it's difficult, man. All right, so um, I'm immediately uh, tempted to do my usual setup, which is kind of like this is gonna be uh, draw, this is gonna be update. Uh, let us set up the different screens, right? So, um, DRW, DRW. I'm gonna set some functions, UPD. Uh, this is not gonna be tutorial, by the way. <laughs> if you have any questions on how things work and why I'm doing things, <laughs> ask away, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna explain everything. Uh, you're making a yeah, solitaire game. Zectronics made some great solitaire games. That's really fun. Yeah, um, I've been playing them as a research. I've done, get the, got the solitaire game collection, and it's great. Yeah, and, and yeah, there's lots of things I picked up from different games. So like again, like the three that we have three colors is something I picked up from Shenzhen Solitaire. Um, uh, wait, this is draw. Let's call it DRW. Um, so we're gonna we wanna have intro, or let's call it logo. I wanna have a logo screen. 
where, with my name and everything and with Augustine's name as, as well. I think it's important. There's, and, and Gruber music, obviously. Um, start level. Uh, and uh, and game. These are different things. So here we can do always like um, a CLS. Um, now we haven't. I haven't actually thought about the color palette right now. We're just gonna ignore it for now. We're just gonna we want to have something on the screen, and then we're gonna think about how we're gonna manage the color. It's always a bit difficult to work with. Um, uh, alternate color palette um, but yeah we're gonna have to make it work so let's just do it like a for now like a print on in the uh, just, just so we can see proceeding from one screen to another right now print um, logo uh, So we're drawing the logo screen, we're drawing a start screen, start. We're drawing the level select screen, level, and we're drawing the game. Okay. Um, then here we're just gonna do derv equals derv logo, and UPD is so UPD logo. Uh, basically doing our state machine, uh, the game switches different, uh, between different states. Uh, and then I'm going to do the update functions accordingly. UPD. UPD. And UPD. Right, then uh, we don't need these things here, but we do have to have like some kind of way of advancing through this, right? Hey, Jamigans! You, uh, well, I did an introduction of the game that we're working on, and we are um, just starting the game. Um, by the way, I call it Shapes P8. I don't, don't see it. I call it Shapes P8, but actually it's Shape of Mind, because it's a pun of state of mind, right? Uh, like in terms of naming, it's shapes of mind, maybe, or shape, shapes of minds. I don't know. Whatever, I'm gonna stick to shape of mind, obviously. Mm, right, okay, so now the, uh, let's just do like a very simple thing that cycles us through the different things. So uh, I do like to have a t variable as always, the kind of like a variable that counts the frames. I kind of like that. So let's do it like a t equals zero. It's so weird to see programming in the internal editor, and this comment was sponsored by the external editor gang. <laughs> I I respect my re uh, external uh, editor gang, but I'm I'm a purist. It's always funny if I if I go to a, like an external editor whenever I work in different language. It's like such a whoa. <laughs> it's like you've been, you know, I don't know, like working in a tiny note, note netbook your entire life, and suddenly you're like, oh. <laughs> Go to like a full screen, big screen uh, PC. Right. Um, oh yeah, by the way, we want to have update 60, right? We want to have 60 frames per second, baby. And then we're going to do something like, um, if T is greater than 60, then, or B, B T in P, or, or um, let's just do let's do these or btn bt oh, btnp uh, oh then end what we're doing boss <laughs> we're doing a solitaire game. Um, update start. 
update start logo start perfect game done thank you for joining the, the chat the stream <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow <laughs> uh, uh, okay so let's let's just like here oh wow Agent APM uh, with a with a not necessarily. I can have a clever low scope idea like um, the dynamic mask. So my mind goes, yeah, it's too complex. You can just draw your screen one, copy it. <laughs> blah 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 blah. Uh, okay, I finished. Where is it? I'm done ex explaining. Where is the working code? You so slow. Why are you so slow, buddy? Oh, your um, your mind races ahead of the body. Is that the idea? Um, and then we're gonna like, yeah. Um, so the, here's a question that I'm kind of struggling with recently. Um, I've been always using X as the default confirm button because it's kind of like easier to find on a keyboard. Like when you see X, there people might be inclined to press X on the keyboard and that's like, oh, it works. Um, but recently I'm more, I'm more interested in the O, uh, in the O as a confirm button because um, on the mobile consoles, it feels better. And on the game pads. Oh, yeah. I oh, 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 forgot. Um, technical challenge. There's another technical challenge. Uh, mouse controls. Yeah, we're totally going to try to have mouse, mouse controls because a lot of people like to play, play solitaire on, uh, with a mouse. And so, yeah, we're going to try to make that work. The first time I'm actually doing game with mouse controls, but I want to have both. I want to have mouse controls and uh, keyboard controls. No, it's not an O. It's um, like it's, it's circle and cross, I guess. But I call it O because it's easier to say than circle. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, and here we're gonna actually, we're gonna actually, we're gonna actually do the, like, a, oh man, my, the, the, my desk is not really great for, for my mouse and I'm struggling. The struggle is real. Um, start. Um, level, start game, let's go start game. I'm gonna, I always like to start game in a, in a first tab because in the first step is like setup and stuff like that. So it kind of feels like right if we have to start game in the, in the first frame, uh, in the first tab. Yeah, this character is shift O, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's how you make it, shift O. It's actually really logical if you think about it. shift O, it creates the O, shift X creates the X, shift L like left creates left, Shift, shift R, like right, creates right. Shift U, like up, creates up. And shift D, like down, creates down. It's, uh, Zep has, has been thinking about this. Uh, game, game, okay. Um, so if we assume that the circle is confirmed, then I'm guessing if we're gonna press X, we're gonna return. Uh, then we're gonna return to... Hello, um, nerdy teacher. Oh, nerdy teachers, hey! Long time no see. How about those new tutorials? I heard there's some new, you have some new stuff happening, new start, new stuff coming up. There's so many people that still use the jump run tutorial and it's, it's, it's a good tutorial, I have to say. Absolves me from the, from the duty of having to make one because it's already so good. Um, yeah, no, wait, not here, not here, yeah. This is returned to to menu. Uh, um, 
Yes, more on the way. That's good. That's good. It's good to hear. And then uh, here we're going to return to start as well. Yeah. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Okay, so this gives us a bit of a flow um, here in the start screen. Uh, yeah, it doesn't actually matter. I want to. I want to confirm always with the with the O. I want to make it so that O always confirms. And here, yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. That's good. So let's let's try this. So we have logo screen goes into start. Pressing O go gets us to the level selection screen. Pressing O gets us to the game. Now we're playing the game. Woo -woo. And we press O. No, oh, no. And now we press X to kind of cancel out, and we are in the start screen again. Okay. And here, yeah. Okay. And then here, press X gets us in the start screen. That's good. Now the teachers, I just finished moving cities and building a new computer room. Will stream when set up as well. I feel you. That's exactly what I've been doing as well. It sucks. It's not a good, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to move. There's so much involved. It takes a while until you're, you're, you're back. Back on, 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 you know, unloaded all the things and, and, and um, built the furniture and set up. There's just so much little things that you don't have to do when you're set up. Like when you have everything set up, it's like everything is cozy, but if, if you just move, there's just so much things that needs your attention. It, it, little things that you just can't really put even your finger on. <laughs> I hope I have to never do it again. You probably will have to do some moving in your future at some point. That's how it works. Um, right, so now that we have this set up, um, yeah, the question is like, what will I do now? What What is my first... Um, Thing that I want to be doing. Uh, I don't even. Okay, let me let me think about this. Should we do uh, like um? Yeah, let's do some some nice placeholders. Um, I, I we'll create a tool tab, and I'm not gonna mess around this time around. I'm gonna do a C C print immediately. C print center print. Uh, TX, oh wait, let's just call it TXT, um, X, Y, C. And then it's gonna be just like passing all of this on. Um, but the X is gonna be like um, X minus uh, hashtag txt uh, multiplied by two. Yeah, right. A mouse might be a good good next step. In terms of mouse controls, I have a self-made lib which handles mouse for me. I just call update mouse, and I have everything in mouse x, mouse y, r click, and l click variables. Yeah, yeah, that's something probably probably going to do right away. So actually, probably that's going to be good to have as first thing. So we have like little cursor moving around. I also also have to like figure out what 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 kind should I just steal the cursor of of Pico eight? This cursor might might just as well, right? Let's just do this one for. Is that really so difficult to? Steal? Let's just. I'm gonna I'm gonna create it here. So how does that work? Uh, like this. And like this, one, two, three, like this, right? How many, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Probably there's like a way of accessing it somehow. There's probably like some Pico 8 nerds can tell me how to access this graphic. Like something like this, right? That's, that's how it looks. Debating on buying some NES style USB controllers for Pico 8 games, even though my Xbox controller just works fine. It's not accessible. It, it's got to be right. It's got to be. I th I thought I saw somewhere some some behind the scenes. Okay, that seems good. That's that's the. But maybe I, we're gonna think about the colors later. 
it's not important right now. Yeah, I'm. Um, the problem with the NES style controllers is that usually if you go for the cheap ones, they're really bad. Like they're not the quality that you're um, that you're reminded of uh, from the NES times or from Nintendo. This one, these ones are really good. This is from. Um, uh, 8 bit dough. Uh, they are Super Nintendo controllers, but they also have um, NES shaped ones. And they're nice. They're Bluetooth, but you can also use them um, with USB. And I use them with USB. I had some uh, uh, controllers uh, f f just for USB that I bought some time ago. They were very cheap on Amazon and they were horrific. Horrific controllers. And uh, actually caused some problems because some of the buttons didn't. Whoops. Some of the buttons didn't really press correctly. And that's, yeah, and we didn't know if that was a problem from the game or from the controller. It's it's when that happens, just really bad. Yeah, I love 8-bit though DIY kits that let you retrofit original NES controller with Bluetooth. Oh, that's good. Although I'm not really a fan of the Bluetooth controllers, to be honest. I like if, give me, give me cables. Unless I'm doing something from my couch, then obviously maybe. But even then, like there's so much delay on the um, Bluetooth and connecting them, like finding the button combination that triggers it is just always such a um, such a pain. Okay, let's not get distracted here, Christian. Um, this is a text. Something like this. This does work. This works. A lazy this game. find the name of the I just want to make sure because I'm really bad with names I always forget Augustine right Augustine I have to figure out I'm going on Twitter Augustine Augustine Let's just like do the, the text first. Ah, I'm using a American keyboard again, and it's it's a struggle. Music by. Gruber music. Right, um, and I'm immediately, immediately tempted to automate this, and I will in a, in the future. For now, I'm gonna. I always leave a comment with a star whenever I feel like I can. I can optimize this and maybe get some, I don't know, um, definitely some to tokens. Mm, but I am not going to do this now. I just It's just a placeholder anyway. And, you know, I just want to make sure that it's a placeholder that if I leave it like this, it's I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be, uh, you know, I'm not going to feel like I, I, I did something wrong. Uh, but also, But also, I'm not going to spend too long trying to make this work. Ah, uh, that's not good. That's not good. Something was wrong. Let me think about this. Um, 46. Then we jump to 50. Ah, yeah, that's she. I'm sure. Let's go to 60 then. 60. And then here's 70. 
Yes, better, but not ideal. Let's go 80 then. Yes. Um, this, this line is, is too long. Uh, let's let's get our my family case out just based on a, a design. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a bit too fast now. Uh, I think the most precise way to get strength length is something like uh, with local tlen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, you can do that. The um, problem is. <laughs> it's it's kind of like a hen and egg kind of chicken and egg kind of situation where. Uh, you only get the length of the string after you print it. So you have to print it and then you get the length and you have to print it again and delete the previous one. Like it's, it's uh, so it's better just like in this case, I just want to have a quick print function. And um, the length of the printing is only important for those long characters. And we're not going to use them here, so it doesn't matter. Uh, also, special fonts, obviously. Okay, so this so far so good. Let's get um, let's get the mouse going. That's something. I'm not sure how I actually will deal with the mouse because I want it to be really nice and usable. I want don't want the mouse to get in the way when you play it on um, uh, uh, like a gamepad kind of thing. So and I've seen some games. I vaguely remember some games doing it really nicely. So I would have to maybe some do some research. But for now, I just want to have something. Let's get go to the dreadful Pico Eight fan website uh, wiki and get this stat, and because I forgot which stat is doing this. Um, mouse, there we go. Uh, do, don't we have to, yeah, we have to enable the mouse first. That's that's an important thing that you have to do. Uh, it's gonna be an init, I guess. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe something like um, update mouse. Let's do an update mouse here. We might not need it here, but I, I want to always have an update mouse if I can. I'm going to do an update mouse in the update function before we do the actual update function. And in the update mouse, what are we going to do? So stat 32, so we're gonna go mouse, mouse x equals stat 32, <coughs> mouse y equals uh, mouse 33. And then um, this left and right button, I, I guess you can also scroll. I'm not sure if you, well, let's call it mouse, mouse B. Mouse, I want to, I want, I am tempted to call this mouse, but, but it's going to be pretty, pretty long. No, we're going to go butt one. Uh, and that's going to be right. Right, 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 right. So we're gonna go with something like this, right? Mm. Is it like this? Is, is that how it works? Oh, it's a bit field, right? Oh man, I don't even... Oh, it's a bit field. Oh man, I have to do bitwise operations. Oh, how embarrassing, how embarrassing. Do we have some example code? Give me, give me some example code. I don't want to <laughs> bitwise operation. I'm sorry, guys. Um, mouse um, button pico8 sam code. Yeah, there's a demo here, somebody does this. Just to show you what I'm working with, so you can... Ah, 
Ah. Oh, Agent APM got, got me already. Stat. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Thank you so much, thank you so much. That's good, yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking it was working that way, but I I wasn't I wasn't in the mood to debug this if this was going wrong. So I wanna make sure that I have something, but this is actually really good. Um, so, but L and but R, yeah, I guess that makes sense. The more sense of than but one and but two. Yeah, that's good, that's good. So let us, now we also want to have maybe do a debug. So let's do a debug. And uh, we're gonna put it in the draw function after we draw stuff. Um, <laughs> see, there's just so much stuff that you have to get done before you get done. For D in um, all debug, do and print D. And then we go uh, cursor one one. Uh, color eight, and we're gonna do a star here. We can we can, we can remove the debug if we really need the tokens, right? <laughs> mouse L mouse mouse R. Yeah, we could, could do mouse L mouse, but it's but come on, you can put butts in your game. Ah. Uh. Yeah, uh, I did this because I wanted to actually um, debug all of this out. So now we are in update function. Debug. Um, one equals mouse, uh, but, but L, right, but L. Let's go uh, mouse X for, uh, for now. Um, just to see that something is working. It's not working! Why is it though? Oh, I, 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 why flags? What is this? What is this? I, I made him st mistake a Rooney. Oh, okay, so I just took one. One. Oh, oh, right, right, right. You can make it so that um, the mouse buttons trigger the presses on the buttons. Yeah, but that's good. It's working. That's good. Yeah, then you can also draw maybe already the the mouse cursor, right? So we're gonna go SPR, mouse X, oh yeah, man. mouse Y. And it's gonna be this guy here, right? It's gonna be 255. Like this, and now we have a mouse cursor. Ah! Can click on things and everything. I kind of like sharp mouse cursors. I kind of like a mouse cursor that has a point. So maybe like this. Yeah, that seems a bit better to me. Um, also, I kind of like if maybe it's, there's an... I'm going to tweak it. I'm immediately tweaking it. Why am I tweaking this? Is this better? Uh, let us make it as a nicer color maybe. All right, we have a cursor going, guys. It's, it's almost finished, basically. This game is finished. Um, we're in a home stretch, right? <laughs> uh, I want to see if the, the clicking works. To string. I think the you still have to do the... Yeah, okay, that, this works. And then R. Okay, it works. Um, right, so let us think about the next step. 
Should we should we jump straight? Okay, let's let us do let us finish the um, the. Should we finish the? Hmm. I'm thinking. <laughs> Release as early access. <laughs> That's right. And here's my road. <laughs> Good idea, CA, $60. That's how I should do it, right? That's how you do it. Um, right, yeah, let's let's just open our uh, Sprite. And I actually want to get the designs of the different um, of the different shapes. I want to get them in here. So we have something to, to work with. The only problem, oh, not the problem, but there's a bit of a with the Rooney is that uh, those are the shapes that we're working here with are not necessarily um, hmm. uh, they are not oops they are uh, nine nine pixels in white so they do not match perfectly the uh, the sh the sprites in Pico 8 and I, I could go into and I just could import them from Sprite directly, but I kind of like want to I want to spend some time with them. If you know what I'm saying, like I just want to like be here while I create them, create them manually um, to kind of give me an opportunity maybe to tweak them while I do this. Kind of think about how how things are. I'm going to set up. Sometimes you just want to create spaces for you to do some thinking. Thinking is good. Um, let me see. Is this nine pixels? Oh, see, Zep, come on. Why, why don't I have a width indicator? That would be so nice. Do we just have a width indicator when I can, I can so I can see how many pixels I've selected? One, two, three. One, two, three. I think it's it's not nine. I think it's not nine. I think this is going to be nine. Something like this is nine. Huh, interesting. What did I, I did? Some of the designs here I came up with are, are mind boggling. These are basically the different puzzle pieces that fit together. And I was kind of like, I spent some time with them because I want to make sure that they are. Um, Unmistakable. That they're always unique. Um, so you cannot mistake one for another. And I'm not sure if I did it. I don't, I'm not sure if, if I achieved my goal there. Um, and that's going to be one of the major things that... What, what happened there? It's just something? Okay. Um, that's going to be one of the major things we have to... Um, we're going to have to figure out as we go. Uh, a test, actually, we have to test if um, people can read the screen. Like this. What's better, gaps in SPR or tight sheet in SSPR? Um, it depends on what you're doing. Uh, I think I generally I prefer um, like now obviously I prefer SSPR and no gaps, um, but they too SSPR do, do, does cost more tokens. So if sprite sheet space is not a question, uh, like it's not a not something that that you struggle with, then it's definitely better to. Uh, oh man, I, I did a mistake, Rooney. Is it definitely better to to just go with SPR and you know t take that extra time that you save and invest in something else? Just just there's a really good talk about uh, from Bridges about this, and she said um, that it's always kind of like everything you do in game development, in not even in Pico Eight, just in every kind of game development thing, is always like a trade-off. You always 
trading off one thing against another. Um, and in this case, we kind of like you trade off sprite sheet space against, you know, uh, um, tokens and a peace of mind. <laughs> because uh, making SSPR work is more difficult, more work. So now I'm creating like the um, counter shapes that um, the different shapes will connect to. And then we're gonna have to create like a, um, a function that draws the cards. I guess I want to have the cards as soon as possible on the screen. I guess that's a, that's a thing. I decided kind of like I want to do this. Awake? No, 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 no. Oh man, see, see. Like this. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be the interesting shape. I, I wonder if, if people will, will get that. That is just like... Uh, it's just flat. I wonder how that will look. So wait. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I had more pronounced uh, in early designs. I had, to add more pronounced shapes that were like really like bulging out and everything, but. Um, they got like really difficult to read, uh, interestingly. Like if, if the shape is like really crazy, then you don't really know where the puzzle piece part begins and where the card begins. It's like the card, whole card is like this crazy shape. But if there is just like at the very edge and very flat, then it's, I think it's easier to make them in your mind, make them connect. Um, yeah, so these are the kind of shapes I'm, I'm working on. I have to go uh, to the toilet real quick. I am back. How is everybody doing? Pretty good relaxing watching Chris do his entry instead of working on my... Don't, don't let me stop you. Okay. So I guess let's just like draw a card, right? That's just, this is going to be like a good first, first goal. Like just draw something on the screen. Ah. Um, 
Yeah, let's do it in draw game. Let's 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 just create a function called function draw card. So the question is whether I want to split the card into individual parameters and dump them into the <clears throat> arguments, or if I just like save everything into an object and just like draw this object. I think, I think, I think, I do want to have an object, <clears throat> but I don't want to have the position maybe um, to be in the, an object. I want to have to customize the position. My, uh, just like a, we do like a little test card. <laughs> Long day over here. This is a great way to react, yeah. Um, right, okay, so we need to have a top. Um, so the way I'm thinking is because I, I had a prototype. Oh, I haven't showed you the prototype. I, I, let me show you the prototype. <laughs> there, I did some nice work. There's four prototypes I made. Four! Um, nah, this, this one is the funniest one. Okay, so this one uses numbers. Uh, and you can see like this is this is how this will work. You have four lanes, right? And you can start uh, arranging things. You can oh man, it's already it's already bad. So you can put this into and this is basically the A here is the halo basically. So we're already putting one in a halo, and then you can see these fit together. So wait, I already made the game. What's what's the deal? <laughs> it's already finished. Uh, See, wait, what? Oh, yeah. See, the one cannot be put under the six because they're the same color. Uh, but you can put the six under the five here. And you can put the one here, right? Like, this is solitaire. Um, but the cool thing is that you can also <laughs> auto solve. <laughs> So yeah, I was because the thing is, I didn't, I wasn't sure if um, c certain rules in solitaire make it more difficult to solve it, and certain rules make it easier to solve it. And you have to balance. You want to give players enough freedom to kind of like have the freedom of of, um, of being able to do something, and you also want to give them uh, enough challenge that is difficult to do this, right? It's not just like moving cards around, but you have to actually think what you're doing. And like striking a balance is difficult. <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, I made, I created like this, this prototype to kind of like, uh, and the auto solver to kind of like try different rules and different setups and, and, and see if it's even possible to solve it. If um, certain rules will create levels that are just not solvable. And, um, and it was a bit over, I, I, I did overdo it a little bit, I have to say. Um, and I'm not I'm still not sure if this was, it was that useful because we create at, like once you give we create enough freedom, or like once you create a lot of freedom <coughs> in the game, Pico is actually not really able to solve it anymore because there's too much, too many variables to work with, at least not in the very unoptimized version that I have to wait. Uh, at least not in the unoptimized solver that I created here. Oh, yeah. Uh, pro, pro to one, and I want to show you this as well. So this is with the shapes. This was my first design for the different shapes. And as you can see, like, shapes are really, like, the puzzle pieces are really big, and that makes, like, this doesn't look like a card anymore. It looks like some kind of weird fork. Um, and so I thought like, I probably have to make the shapes a little bit less pronounced. So, um, so the shapes do not start to, um, dominate the look of the, of the different things. I'm not sure. Yeah. What were the other prototypes for? I'm not really sure. 
Oh yeah, and then I did some prototypes with the sub pixel rendering because I knew that I want to have this as well. Uh, yeah. Right, we are here. Like, um, let's do um, should I call it bottom or bot? B uh, let's call BTM. Jamigans, uh, it's all good. Working some pixel while watching this. How about you? Yeah. Um, Yeah, so we need a color for the card. Let's just do a nine for now. I'm just gonna later on we're gonna switch the colors around, but for now it's like just just, just want to have something, right? Um, yeah, and then here SSPR. So it's gonna be two SSPR statements from the top and the bottom, and there's gonna be a um, in the center. In the center, there's gonna be just like a rect fill. Okay, so the first SSPR, so it's a source X and source Y, right? Wait! Where? Oh gosh! Oh, it's in the... <laughs> okay, let, let us get this out. It was in the final... in the final um, sprite sheet uh, tab. Um, right, so how are we going to do this? Um, lol cat, lol cat. Source x equals, um, so we're gonna go crd.top, that's gonna be the number of the top card, um, minus one, because we start at one. <laughs> um, we could start at zero, but I don't know, it's, it's kind of like once you once you're in, in Lua land where everything starts with one, you, you just stick to one and, and then multiply it by nine, right? No, actually by 10, because we always have one sprite, uh, one pixel of a gap between the, the things. And I added the pixel of a gap because I just like, I want the shapes to be readable, humanly readable for me. I probably could get some additional sprite space by removing the gaps between the different shapes. But uh, yeah, we might do that if we need the sprite space. I don't think we need it though, so that's okay. Okay, so there's gonna be SX, oops, SX, uh, zero, uh, width is nine, height is, I think it's three, right? Uh, three. Yeah, three. Uh, destination is X, Y. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then we have to do it like a pal, right? So we're going to do a pal statement. Uh, seven gets turned to the CRD uh, call. And nothing happens uh, because we're not drawing anything, obviously. Duh. Draw card CRD 64, 64. Um, nil. CRD is, CRD is nil value, but I ha oh I didn't call it. Oh, God, Jesus, what a, what a look at, at me! What a oh, gosh! There we go. Ah, ah, it's there. Oh, look, our our cursor has turned red, uh, orange as well. Okay, good. So we have this. Um, we came up with some height values for the cards. Um, how much is it? Oh gosh. Uh, seven. So rect fill um, x y plus four um, then X plus eight, Y 
plus um, 10. I think it's 10. Let's, <clears throat> um, yeah, we could, this is something we could simplify. Uh, I, I want to keep it around for now because I don't want to have created like a huge SSPR statement that I will have to debug later on. Uh, let's look at the local here. Um, BTN. Um, now this is no longer zero. This starts at a different location, four. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I want them to look like more, I think more, a little bit more card E. Like, I want to maybe them look like snippets from a tape. Like if you have like a nice, um, like a washi tape, uh, like a, um, yeah, like a, you know, like a tape with nice patterns on it, like in uh, stationary. And I wanted to look in like if, if somebody snipped it into, into pieces and then you put them together. Uh, I I do not like when they're like like weird like forks and everything. That's that I I don't think that I thought it would look nice, but I was kind of like um, they were too crazy for me. I wanted to make them a, a bit more uniform. Y plus 11, I guess, right? Uh, and then here the rect fill needs a 7 at the end. Um, a BTN, oh, it's, it's BTN, but hum, not button. Yeah, this is not what we wanted. Sx plus eight. No, what? I did not. I did not pay attention. Uh, Zero point nine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, wait. So hmm. four nine three. There we go. That's what I'm saying. Like SSPR can get really funky. Okay, um, the rect fill needs to be higher, I guess. Yeah, makes sense. And then, why does this stop? Oh, uh -huh, no. Yeah, this is wrong. Otherwise, we're good, right? I, I'm kind of amazed how many mistakes I'm making here, but yeah, it seems good. Um, let's do an, let's go to a Photoshop now. I actually want to, I want to make sure that, that all of these worked out the way I planned them. I'm just loading the screenshot quickly in Photoshop, just measuring how many pixels we, we ended up drawing, just doing a double check. So it looks exactly how I planned it in my, uh, as bright. Prototype. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, 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 uh. I thought I made, made a screenshot to the desktop. There it is. Uh. Okay, um, so this little bugger <coughs> ends up being. 14 pixels in height. And what did we have in the S bright? <laughs> 13 pixels. Yeah, we have 13 pixels here. So it's one pixel too much. See, good, uh, good thing I checked, good thing I checked. Good thing I checked. 
An orange king with a red beard. That's right, that's him, that's King Orange Beard. Um, yeah. Good. Good. <clears throat> um, there's also a shape. Um, I want to make, maybe also draw a shadow on the cart. Let's just do it for now. And we just, it's going to be hard coded shadow. And then later on, maybe we can do like a. Uh, uh, <clears throat> custom shadow. I'll kind of like modify the color of the shadow and the distance of the shadow. But right now, we're just going to make a, oops, a hard coded shadow. So we're just going to draw the <clears throat> bottom part um, a little bit further down. Like this. Oh yeah. There we go. I think it looks a little bit better. Um, but maybe we don't like it. I don't know. Maybe we're gonna we're gonna keep an eye on out on this one. It's also not the. <clears throat> I don't think it's the final color. I am. Um, I have to look up which colors I came up with, but for now it's it's good enough. Um, there's going to be some shapes that we're going to draw in the center, but again, that's something we're going to talk about, uh, think about later. Um, let us start here and start game. Colors, is, is that good colors? Yeah, colors is okay. Uh, we're going to define some colors, and again, um, these are not the final colors, but I just want to have some colors going on. So 9, 3, and 12. Let's go 9, 3, and 12. 9, 3, and 12. And it's maybe not going to be the best colors in the world, but it's the one that we have. Yeah, and then and then here in a draw function, it seems like my what actually is happening is my mouse is actually maybe maybe my mouse is actually conking out. Maybe maybe actually I need a new battery. This might be something I need. Um, that's why I don't like uh, things that are wireless sometimes. Um, right, so let's do it like one and then do like a local card call, or like C call equals colors CLD dot call. <clears throat> and then you can do this and And yeah, that's it. <sighs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's not a, it's not a function. It's an array. Man. Okay, this works. And then we're gonna change the color to two, and it should give us a green one. Oh, I can already feel it. Like, oh, I want to pick it up. I want to pick it up with a mouse. <laughs> That's good. Um, right, 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 right. So maybe we can now think of creating the actual board state. Just like just to have a bunch of cards on on the screen. Maybe that would be a good step. Um, so we're gonna go. First, we're gonna create all of the cards. Yeah, the shadow is nice, right? Um, I'm gonna do an R heap. I'm gonna call it a R heap. Uh, for i equals 
1 to 6 do. And, and then for uh, j equals 1 to 3. So we're going to have uh, cards that go from 1 to 6 basically and then colors that go from 1 to 3. So we have three colors and six different cards for each suit. And then we're going to create cards in there. Like this. And then we're going to add to our heap. That's a random heap. <laughs> we're going to go add the cards there. So basically we have a deck. Let's call this a deck. Not our heap. Let's call it deck. This is a deck of cards that we're creating. And then we're going to use that deck to deal it on the table. Uh, my card. Um, and then now we just need to... Okay, so top is going to be I and bottom is going to be I. Uh, uh, top is I, I minus one. Okay, I minus one equals zero and uh, six or <laughs> minus one. <laughs> Um, and then color is going to be J. So this will get create us all of the cards. And then we are going to create, I call this the heap. Uh, this is not going to be local. It's going to be actually global. So I'm going to go heap equals level up. So we're going to create four heaps and we're going to distribute the cards along the heaps. Um, yeah, this ternary area is really... <laughs> <laughs> Turn the areas in, in, in Lua are, are a special, special kind of breed. Um, now something that we have here is actually, yeah, but we're gonna still do it. Um, I, I've, I, because I'm kind of hard coding in a number of heaps. Um, and in my project, I kind of like left it open. So I kind of more and less heaps. Um, so kind of like modify, uh, but maybe it's a good idea. Maybe it's a good idea to just keep the heaps, um, um, fix them right now, because I, in the prototype, I had to make them uh, flexible, but I think now in the final game, we can stick to, we get, we're making the decision here right now. We're gonna leave it at four heaps. We cannot change the number of heaps. Bretzky, yay, how are you doing? And Granny Gamer 71, nice, nice, nice. Um, yeah, no, wait. No, we could do it a different way. We're gonna, haha, <laughs> until, repeat, until, I'm gonna do it like this. Like this. And Ilatius Domesticus. Nice, nice. Um, until deck, hashtag deck uh, equals zero. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, local i equals one plus, or actually R&D for uh, sale, ceiling, right? This will, should get us number between one and four. And then we're gonna go keep I, add heap I, del, um, R and D deck deck. That's a very complex way, uh, compact way of expressing this. So we're gonna add to. We're gonna we can actually do it all in line, everything in line. So we're gonna pick a random number, uh, one of the four heaps, uh, and then we're gonna add something to that heap. And the thing that we're gonna add is gonna be a random card from the deck. 
we're going to delete that card from the deck and the delete statement actually returns the item that's being deleted. So we're going to use that to just plop it into the, into the heap. Kind of like this uh, acrobatic thing. And this should get us all of the decks. Uh, the way. Did we, did we delete the debug? Yeah, we did delete. What, what is happening? What is happening? Oh, there's some 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 weird. Um, I want to put just a number of the first in the first heap just to make sure how many cards we actually dealt out. Just so to see that something working. That ad doesn't look right. Let's see. Ah, oh, here, there's a blue missing, missing here. Uh oh. I think we got a. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The delete is wrong. It worked. Although seven cards is a lot. Is that is that how it works? You're adding a delete return value to the table. That's that's right. That's what I'm doing. The de delete returns the um, the item that is being deleted. Yeah, I think my my mouse is dying here. Oh, maybe not. <clears throat> So we can now draw all the heaps. So we're gonna go for i equals one to four b and local my or, or line equals heap uh, i and. Oh, seeding zero is, I don't think, should R&D return zero? Is that how it works? I don't think R&D ever returns zero, does it? That would be bad if it returns zero. It does? Okay. Well, I thought I, I was smart, but then let's go um, min, no, max. This, right? Oh no, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Oh well, then I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be that. That kind of. That, let's do this. Floor. You can fix it with i equals earn the heap at i. Okay. Uh, Oh yeah, we don't need this. For J equals one hashtag L and E two. And then we're just gonna draw a card. So we're gonna go draw a card, uh, L and E square brackets J. Um, I'm going to draw it in i times 12. I'm sure we're going to, positioning something we're going to figure out as we go. And then this one, uh, whatever, 13. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let's just do, I want to see something. I, I'm nervous, I don't see anything. Okay, let's do this. Uh, What? What, what? what was missing? I didn't close something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. American keyboard again. Where is the start? There we go. 
Not what I expected. Oh, is it because... Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> because it's random, obviously. <laughs> huh, maybe that's actually good. Maybe that's good. Cards, yay! Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't. I'm not sure if I like the random stuff. I don't. Uh, I think it might be wiser. You know what? I I'm, I will think about this later because the problem is like mm, the only problem I'm having here right now is that um, they are pretty far down the screen already. Um, so if like because some lines are empty, like this line here is empty, so they are pretty far down already. So um, so I might not have enough t uh, space for the face, but I probably will have to do some kind of scrolling anyway uh, to do the halo and the girl stuff. So the her girl will scroll away when there's not enough room to show them. And I still can put them up a bit higher. So that's something we maybe... Um, let's do the positioning stuff now. Mm, let's do a minus 12 here. So let's see how that works. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah, this is good. Um, A bit more horizontal spacing. Um, more. <clears throat> more. Let's do 20. Mm, yeah, 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 that's good. Um, and then plus 10. Um, seven, fifteen. Um, I think the vertical spacing is a bit too much. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's a bit better when they're a bit close together. But you can see already, like this one line is just goes all the way down now. <laughs> I love that you already created groove music. He said yes! He said I already have music by him, <laughs> even though it's a little bit too quiet for you guys to see. Because of my setup, it's my fault, it's my fault. Um, I just want to make sure that we are centered right now. Hmm. I love, how, how, how is it that Photoshop still takes such a long time to, to, to launch? I don't understand. This is a top-notch notebook. And it's, Photoshop still takes time to load. I don't understand. Why is this such a bad software? In this day and age, I thought, when I was young, I thought, oh, in the future, we're gonna have computers that are so fast. Like it takes longer for my computer to boot than it takes them for, to start Photoshop. Why? I don't understand. What is Photoshop doing? 28. Okay, so we want to have something like... Yeah, two pixels to the right. You know what? Let's leave Photoshop in the background. Uh, I think this is correct. Too many plugins. I didn't install any plugins. <laughs> There's no plugins. There's no plugins. I swear. Not up to last thing. 
Okay. Um, this is already good. This is already this looking looking nice. So what's going to be the next thing? Well, I guess. Yeah, I do have Affinity. I'm not sure if I have any Affinity installed. Uh, definitely prefer Affinity um, over like the. Uh, there is like Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer, I think, right? Designer is really good. Uh, even better than Illustrator, I think. I'd never liked Illustrator. Um, with Photo, I had some problems. I I tried to make it work, but there's just like some simple silly stuff that I, was, uh, I wasn't so hard about. And I wanted to do something real quick and I just couldn't figure out how to do it in, 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 in a Photo, so I kind of like went back to Photoshop real quick, but I think I will have to sit down and figure out photo because in the long term, I just don't want to use Adobe anymore. Um, okay, yeah, no, this is good. Yeah, so I'm thinking should we start moving cards around? Is that is that the next thing? Is that what we want to be doing next? Moving cards around? Be nice because we can just click on a card. I've always been surprised uh, how well their products work on iPad. Yeah, I don't have an iPad, but I'm thinking of getting it on one maybe at some point. Um, because my Surface notebook is kind of showing its age. What's the next natural step here? Yeah, let's 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 start moving things. Oh, actually, no. Um, something I want to be doing next. Huh, this is that's an interesting one. Um, I want to. Um, so that's actually something I did figure out in the. Um, let's just do like a tab called gameplay. Um, and then do a function called stack. And this one goes for i equals one to four do. Um, Surface to iPad is not a direct replacement. The iPad sandbox is really annoying to me. Yeah, it's, that's what I'm thinking too. That's, um, but the problem is like the newer Surface models are not really that great. They don't have a um, headphone jack and they don't have um, um, they don't have the SD card reader. So. At that point, like, why don't I just get an iPad? Um, they don't, of course, you cannot run the Microsoft stuff, so that's good, um, so that's bad. But also, you can run some iOS apps that I'm actually interested in. And I think the um, pen of the Apple products is way better than the pen, pen solutions with the Surface models. Um, the software is designed for it more, um, and like the handling of the pen is a lot better. Like I tried to do some drawing on the surface that I have, but it, like the lines are all squiggly. It's just like not really made for it. Um, so yeah, just for the pen solution, I think the iPad is kind of like interesting thing to check out and just try to make the apps work. <clears throat> there is like the painter app, what's called. There is, there is like a, this famous one app for digital painting that I want to try on the iPad. Right. Um, so what I want to do is I want to loop through all of the through all of the cards, right? So basically, we want to do the same thing as in the draw function. Oh, man, what is it? I have to I have to use a uh, mouse pad to see if this the problem is the is the mouse or the mouse pad. Procreate, yeah, Procreate. That's right. I was wondering if Procreate is good for pixel art. Um, because I heard some people say like they do pixel art with Procreate, so I want to try it myself. So we are gonna just go through all of the cards, and we're gonna see if the next card in the heap is um, is one, if the cards are compatible with each other, right? So we can actually go two to the line. So we're gonna go like if. Um, L N E J dot top equals 
and then E. Um, wait, actually, I'm gonna do another function for this. So if uh, if connect connects, I guess if we're asking if two cards connect to each other, right? Maybe connects. Um, L and E. So first the upper card, then the lower card. So L and E J minus one and then L and E J. So we're gonna just pick two cards from the heap and then we're gonna compare them with each other. If that's true, if they do connect, then um, we're gonna save it actually in the card. So we're gonna go L and E J from stacked equals true. Else. And we're gonna, else we're gonna set it to false. Okay, so now we need to do the connect function. Card one, card two. Uh, we're gonna say if card one dot color is not equals, uh, if, is, if that's equal, card two dot color then return false and then we're gonna go if card one dot bt bottom is equal is not equals card two top then return false and otherwise re return true probably could have probably could do an like one bit if statement out of this right and then equal if we're gonna do like like this then we can go like like this right and when you know reason for the if statement Um, then after we generate the level, we're gonna do a stack. Um, and when we're drawing things, we're gonna somehow indicate that if it's stacked. Um, just to see if it worked. Stack, then print. Exclamation. Um, at the position. Uh, in red. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, you can, you could combine them into, into just one big statement. Mm, there's a problem here. Oh. So this would be stacked, okay, uh, and this would be stacked, okay. Let's try it again. Yeah. Okay. Then let's make sure that the stacking actually works better. Um, so the way we're gonna do this is we are gonna do a local variable called um, CY or something. We're gonna start at Uh, like one, no, actually minus 14, right? No, no, one, 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 one is good. And then we're gonna draw the card. Hmm. Yeah, draw the card plus equals. Um, 15. And then we're gonna go if add an ej dot stack then c 
cy minus equal like three. Uh, we have to figure out what the right number is. Um, and also we have to draw the shadows a bit differently. I just re um, realized. We have to draw the f all the shadows first and then we're gonna draw them, the cards. What is what my focus? Why, why, why you no know work focus? You know, you know that I'm here. Why, why are you not work focus? There we go. Um, is it gonna be impossible to have connected pieces buried in the stack? Oh no, no. I mean, it's um, connected pieces will. It's definitely gonna be possible. There are already connected pieces in the stack. Um, you have to kind of unbury them, um, but later you cannot bury them again. Um, but I want pieces to auto always automatically connect if they can. Um, so let's try this. Yeah, okay. So now the shadows are kind of like causing some, some, some troubles. Let's uh, remove the shadows real quick. Uh, Okay, so it has to be minus more, minus four. Okay, so now the pieces are connecting. Um, the problem is like we, it's always, so, with shadows it's always a bit difficult. Um, you always have to draw all of the shadows and then you have to draw all of them again. So, I guess I could just not draw a shadow if it's stacked, right? Yeah, let's do that. Let's just do it. It's going to be a simpler solution. Oh no, actually, uh, the problem is you have to draw a shadow because the first item in the stack is not stacked. Um, so I will have to would have to access the next card in line, which is like ugh. Maybe it's going to be just easier to draw everything out of the shadows in one go. Hmm? Like this. I'm going to take this out. And first shadows and then normal, normal, right? Something like this. And then something like this, shadow. Uh, that's, that doesn't feel so great, but okay. Um, Something like this. Hi, PC isn't happy at the moment. Hope the stream is going well. Your PC isn't happy at the moment? That sounds, that sounds, that's, that's not, that's not a good thing. This is the upper part of the card, and then just the lower part is gonna be when shadow, right? Um, 
shadow and one or zero. Hey, squid light, say it's squid light. Um, Um, yeah, I don't know how, how, how long I will be streaming still. It's 16. Yeah, yeah. Um, my wife and my daughter and her sister, like the sister of my wife, are, um, oh, I forgot to switch over, are, are taking a walk. And they will be soon at some point. Uh, they will be back soon. And then uh, that's going to be the end of the screen. <laughs> that's the that's, that's natural end of the stream. I might return later in the evening. Ah, ah, okay, got it, got it, got it. What am I doing wrong? It seems like Seems like this is not being executed. I mean, we can just leave it out. It's fine, right? Oh. Ooh. Did I break something accidentally? It seems like I broke something accidentally. We do the sprite, we do the rect fill, we switch to the color and do another sprite. The shadow's there, sometimes. In some some cases, it's not there. Oh, 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 I know, I know, no, no, I know, I know. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm generally, uh, genuinely surprised. Maybe this is this? No, no, it can't be, right? Um, yeah, but I can see the code, um, Bretsky. I can, I can see the code. Fine. It's just like I don't, I don't know what, why, why it's not working. Because I didn't change much. Look, at some point, sometimes there is no shadow. There's some situations where there's no shadow. Oh, wait, is it just because it's white? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, okay, got it, got it, got it. I just like, somehow I lost, I lost the, uh, the yeah, the pal. I, somehow I, I deleted the pal. I don't know why, I don't know how that happened, but here we are. Okay, um, a 
Okay, okay, good. Um, I see some of the shapes are not connecting perfectly. Why did it? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think here it doesn't connect perfectly. Yeah. Like this. Oh yeah, now now they're connecting. Okay, good. Hmm. Okay, so we now we have shadows. We have we have the uh, different cards. Um, we can start technically. Does it does it focus now? Yeah, it focuses now. Yeah. The the this is a new camera, and uh, it's I got it because from the generous funds from the coffee, and. Um, it's the first time I'm actually using camera that does autofocus on me. And so, so, um, but it's, the, the, those models are kind of like, the autofocus is like so problem. So I'm like very nervous about the autofocus not working. Um, okay, good. So this is already fine. Um, I'm, I'm thinking I want to be dragging cards back and forth. This is, would be a really good goal for, for the first setting. Um, the only problem I have with that is that I, I want to do it with both with mouse and with, with a keyboard. And I'm not sure how to reconcile the two. But because I want to be moving the... Like if the mouse is moving, I want to be moving the, the cursor with a mouse. But if I press a button, then I want the cursor to go where, where I'm pointing with a button. And I don't know which, which part to program first, the, the mouse part or the button part. That's kind of like a tricky situation. Um, Okay, let me think about this. So I think we need to, so I think we need to do a couple of things. So we're gonna go cur x equals zero, cur y equals zero, and then cur dx, I guess. Um, yeah, because I want to be, okay, so I want to be drawing the mouse cursor on a certain position, but also want to animate the mouse cursor as well. And there's going to be also a kind of like a logical cursor, I think. Cell X, not sex. <laughs> this is a family friendly stream. Come on, guys. <laughs> I swear, it was an honest mistake. Um, yeah. So here's what I'm thinking. I am going to, when we're drawing the, the, the cursor, here's where we're drawing it. We're not going to draw it on mouse X, but on cur X and cur Y. And then we're gonna go cur x equals mouse x, and cur y equals mouse y. <clears throat> and then we're gonna do we're gonna do this cur x equals cur dx minus cur uh, plus equals. Divided by two, let's go by four. Um, it's, this is a bit backwards, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, oh, 
what would you have what would you have what would you name a variable if you have a button that selects x says kevin thompson hi kevin thompson uh But selects. <laughs> selects but. <laughs> I know. I know where this is going. Um, uh uh Keep it family friendly, guys. Keep it family friendly. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna do something like mouse mode equals false. If mouse mode then else. So the idea is that we have the cursor, right? And the cursor is controlling the the little the the we have the mouse and <laughs> the mouse is controlling the, the, the cursor. But if I press a button, a directional button, I want to disengage the mouse from the cursor. I want then to, for the buttons to be controlling the mouse. Uh, and then if I move the mouse again, then I want the mouse to be controlling the cursor. So, so yeah, this is a bit of a bit of a last. Max equals mouse x. Last m y equals mouse y. And I'm going to go if And last mx is not equals mouse m mouse x or last m y is, is not equals mouse oops not equals mouse y then have the last hovered card item in a variable and just jump the cursor to that if a button is pressed ah uh, no that's that's not enough because like if i hovered something and i hover out from it and I click somewhere where uh, there's no card. I don't want to be jumping through the card that I hovered on last. I, if I click in nothing, I don't want to have nothing to be happening. Um, last my. So, yeah. And then I'm gonna prime it. Okay, so I just wanna draw the mouse mode to the screen, uh, to the debug. No, to string. Have you have the? Yeah, okay, no, that's, that's okay. I already read that comment. Okay, so now it's false. Now the mouse, the mouse is not controlling the cursor technique. But if I move the mouse, now it's controlling the cursor. You can see how how it's weird. My mouse is not responding. I don't know why. Sometimes it's not responding. Uh, I wonder if it's um, again it's, if it's if it's the my table. Or if it's um, the mouse 
battery is dying. Mm, I have a mouse pad, I have to set it up. Angela Dante, sorry, I cannot follow the stream as I would like. I would definitely watch later. Yeah, no problem. I will probably upload it to um, YouTube uh, at, at some point. I eventually, maybe in, in future streams, we will do a, a dual stream. Okay, and then if I press the button, I want to um, the mouse mode to end. So basically, but that's good. that's something we're gonna do in the in here in the game. game yeah, there we go <clears throat> yeah I don't we don't we don't need to F. we don't need this anymore if btn p then and then mouse move equals false Right, so I can move the mouse around. And then if I set it to false, now the mouse, the, the cursor is controlled with the, with the keys and no longer with the mouse. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. And now if I can, yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. Um, and then we have cell X and cell Y. That's gonna be the actual the selection for the, for the different look. Locations. Now, let me let me set the start game. Let's put it cell X and cell Y. Let's set it to cell X to one. Y is gonna be well. Let's set it to one. So basically, the idea is that cell X X one X is the column that we're selecting, the heap that we're selecting, and Y is the card from the bottom that we're selecting. I'm surprised as you have a lot of YouTube followers, you're not live streaming to YouTube. Yeah, um, so the idea was that I just wanted to like, uh, there's multiple reasons for this. Uh, first of all, I previously had a, had a like multi-stream setup where I stream to YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Um, but this is my first stream since so like three years. And I just didn't want to add more complexity to this. I, I was like, I'm glad it worked so far. It worked so well, but actually there were some problems. So I don't want to be streaming to YouTube to the big audience when I'm not really sure if this will work at all. And I definitely don't want to stream to both at the same time when it's my first stream. Um, yeah, and also I, I'm kind of feeling a bit nervous about putting all my eggs in the basket and have all the audience on YouTube, just on YouTube, because if anything, if we've learned anything from the current Twitter situations is that at any point, some billionaire can come, come in and destroy a platform that you've been building an audience on and then what's then, right? So I want to maybe uh, do more streams on Twitch, especially if I'm going to stream like maybe games or something that would be nice to do on Twitch, something that's kind of like more relaxed. Twitch seems like a safer choice. Uh, but yeah, I will probably change it to YouTube at some point. Right, so, um, yeah. YouTube is also not the best for with promoting live streams based on my experience, even for creators that I follow. Yeah. I've, I do watch sometimes streams on YouTube. It's fine. It's okay. But yeah, it's definitely, it, it doesn't seem like a platform made for streaming the way Twitch is made for streaming. Um, all right. So, okay. Just like a very stupid thing. We're just going to do uh, cell X. Cell X um, minus equals one. And here we're going to do a cell X plus equals plus equals one. And then we're going to do cell X equals one. Oh God, this is always so complicated. Um, one plus cell X 
minus one modulo four. Like, like this. In debug. Uh, let's 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 put selects in debug for now. Debug. Just want to make sure that that it's actually doing the thing I'm I'm, I'm thinking it's doing. Oh yeah, it's working. Good. Good. Um. And then we're gonna go. Right, so when we're drawing the heaps, right? Yeah, draw heaps. Yeah, whatever. Um, we're gonna go here. Um, so the part of the Irony for me is here is that I was so late to the party. I have no idea what is being built. Well, I mean, you, there's going to be a VOD. You will see at the beginning what we're building. We do basically doing solid chair. So, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna go if mouse mode there, uh, and then Per DX, yeah, that's what we're doing. Not mouse mode. Um, are we trying? I'm trying to figure out where to draw the mouse cursor when we're trying, controlling the mouse cursor with the keyboard. Um, because the, now we can switch between different columns, so now I just want to draw the the mouse cursor at the different columns when I switch them to the keys. Uh, wait, this is this is drawing a single card. That's not what I wanted. Uh, I wanted to do it in a draw heaps because this is where we're calculating the positions of the cards. Uh, and I'm figuring if something like this, set X. Yeah, so this is going to be the position of the of the cursor, and that's should be. Let's 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 just do it like this. I just want to see something on the screen. Okay. Um, did I do something wrong? Oh oh yeah. Somebody, I think, warned me in the chat. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. See? <laughs> Baby! That's good. It's a bit uh, sluggish. Let's do that times divided by two. Yeah, that seems better. Interesting. Oh yeah, I guess it makes sense. Oh man, what? Is it really? No, I think it's it's a table. It's, the table has a really weird spot here. Um, right, and then we want to update. No. It, well, Oh yeah, we kind of do it in the draw function weird, weirdly enough, but it's okay. Uh, let's do it at 0.5 here. I think that will help with the consistency. Yeah, I know it's better. There will, there's a saved clip where he explains a bit of an intro. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody saved a clip for that. That's good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad they did. Mm. So we're gonna go if, um, yeah, 
let's let's do it here. Let's do it here. Um, like here. Bam. If not mouse mode and cur dx. No, uh, and and cell x equals i. So if we are in the column that is currently being selected, then we are setting the position of the mouse cursor at the right position. And this is going to be in this case um, cy like this. See now, now it's jumping between the different positions. It's coming together, guys. See, that's good. Um, that's right. The cursor is a bit. Uh, generic, but I tried different cursor designs like with a hand would be kind of nice But I tried to put it with a hand and I did not like How like if the cursor is too elaborate it kind of like covers the shapes and you kind of want to see the shapes, right? so yeah, yeah it Looks good It's a bit weird that this is a bit weird, but it's okay. Where are we? Where are we? And yeah, I can also yeah, that's this is good right now. So I can I can jump between the different different cards, but I can also take take charge of it with a mouse cursor. So we can we can use both now. That was the goal. That was the goal. So you can use mouse and uh, keyboard. Right now we have to think about how to, how we how we drag the cards back and forth, and I have some cool things planned for dragging cards. And because the, what I wanted to do is maybe do the cards to uh, when you drag them around, because they're so supposed to be more like ribbons. Um, and on the on the cover there's like these kinds of like uh, wavy lines and everything. So I wanted maybe like if you drag the card around, it's kind of like there is um. It lags behind the cursor, so we can, can like wave it around a little bit. Especially if you have like a lot of cars um, in a long tail, then you would like woo, get like really swingy and everything. That would be really nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is this is this is getting this is getting a bit tricky now. But okay. So. Let's do the keyboard control first, and then we can, if the keyboard is working, then we can make the, uh, the mouse work as well. And also, I'm just ignoring the fact that you can um, select, like if there's already something stacked, that you can select the top card of the stack, not just the end last, last card in a, in, a, in a heap. But that's something that we want to deal with later. That's not that, that difficult to do. <clears throat> um, just the dragging is, is important. So we're gonna go if btnp, and yeah, this is another decision that is kind of difficult. So initially in my first prototype, I had it so that you have to keep the button pressed uh, to keep dragging. So we kind of like keep button pressed and then while the button is pressed, you move it. So, and then you release the button and that will drop the card. But I noticed myself, I forgot about it. And then when I returned to the game, I pressed the button, like t just tapped the button and it didn't do anything. And I was like, what, what's happening? So uh, I want to maybe make it so that it's uh, bo both things are possible. So you can drag by keeping the button pressed, but you can also maybe um, just tap the button quickly to kind of like um, do a toggle there. Start drag, but for for now let's do the toggle. I think the toggle is, is easier to pull off, and then if the toggle is there, we can make it maybe work for the for the um, different 
way of doing this. So the way I want to do this is maybe, and let's do this in the start game function. Um, let's call, call it drag. Could call it also hand maybe. Let's call it drag, it's fine. It's, let's call it drag. Let's make it so that we can drag one card. So we're gonna, if drag, Oh, I think my the girls are ret returned. So we have to stop here. We're gonna stop the stop um, stop the stream here, because my wife and my my and her sister and my my uh, baby daughter returned. So we're gonna stop it for now. Thank you so much for joining. Um, and we I might return this evening to finish this up to to have a to have a, uh, to finish the drag and drop stuff today on the first day. That would be really nice, really good, really good start. So yeah. Sorry for this abrupt ending, but um, thank you for joining me in this. I'm really excited for for this for this uh, for this series. I'm actually like doing something else than than shmups uh, all of a sudden. See you this evening, perhaps, and if not this evening, then certainly tomorrow. Bye bye.